So, if you are here, you have joined Vinyl Revival for their Back to the 80s quiz. We'll get going in a minute, but I just wanted to show you a few little uh, pictures just to get you back in the mood and take you back to the 80s so that uh, you'll be absolutely ready for these questions. So, there's a few uh, shots of famous films and famous bands and singers and artists. So, uh, George Michael there on the screen you can see. Die Hard, brilliant film. Um, yes, with uh, Human League on the right-hand side. So we're just going to let um, one or two last-minute people join um, before we get underway. So just enjoy the little uh, slideshow there, and then we'll go into the quiz and um, and get underway. So there's quite a few people on already. I look looking at my screen. We've got 46 on the uh, on the thing. So uh, I think we'll get underway. So um, right. Good evening everyone, my name is Nigel, I'm uh, one of the DJs with Vinyl Revival and uh, we are putting this uh, quiz together for you tonight, all about the 80s, it's not just music, it's 80s films, it's 80s pictures, it's 80s triv and there is of course an 80s music round. So uh, I am, as usual, ably assisted by my trusty sidekick and assistant Lady Penelope. Hello! Everybody, who Thank is you for uh, join, who is going, joining us? He's going to be helping me out because uh, there's quite a lot of you on this quiz tonight. Um, so hopefully um, you will remember the 80s, or if not, you've got older brothers or sisters or mums and dads who remember the 80s. So just um, one little point: uh, the quiz is a write it down on a sheet of paper um, type quiz. So what you're going to need is this you're going to need a pen and paper because uh, it's not write it in the comments because we wouldn't be able to keep up with that and in any case everyone can see your um, your answers and they'll do better than you so we wouldn't want that really so um so that's that um let's go back to uh this while i sort something else out it's all very complicated this is <laughs> yes indeed you can cope. I can cope just about, just about <laughs> cope. So we'll do a few uh, shout outs. First of all, we'll do the birthday shout outs. So, um, so let me do birthday shout outs. If anyone's had a birthday today, or actually this week in the run up to this quiz, if you type it in the comments, um, we're getting lots of people saying hello, which is great. Um, so one person on here is Bobby Dowling. If you're on Bobby, can you say hello? And uh, Bobby's messaged me to say it's her birthday today. And, uh, and Bobby works for the NHS as a radiographer. So um, so we all wish Bobby a very happy birthday. Absolutely. Um, plus everybody else who's, uh, who's on, whose birthday is this week. And in fact, I'm gonna ask a little, uh, a little request now, if you can do the, uh, the like symbol or the heart symbol, just for all the key workers, um, you know, the NHS, um, all the teachers and uh, teaching assistants, all the emergency services who've worked really hard through this very difficult COVID to, uh, to try and keep the country going. So, uh, so yeah, let's show our appreciation and let's, uh, let's send a bit of love out to all those people. I think they, uh, they really deserve it for, um, for the efforts that they've gone to to keep the country going. So, uh, Bobby, if you're on, happy birthday to you. Penny will tell me uh, she's keeping up with the comments if anyone else's birthday. Yes, well, Dawn. Oh, Dawn, yes, our friend Dawn's our friend birthday Dawn. on yes. Tuesday. Dawn's birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, uh, Dawn Joyce. It was your birthday on Tuesday, of course. So, um, well, we've got uh, Cheryl Hager. Her birthday on the 27th. Oh, Cheryl, yes. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, Cheryl. So keep going with those likes and hearts. And uh, yes, happy birthday to all the people whose birthday is this week. And hopefully you're all about the same sort of age as me and we'll remember the 80s. So let's go back to the... Um, let's go back to the other slide, which has now got Brucey on it. Now here's Brucey. Why have I got a picture of Brucey on the screen, you may ask. Why have you got a picture of Brucey, they all cry. Why have you got a picture of Brucey? Yes, um, well, I can't remember actually. But no, 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 it's because Brucey is going to reveal tonight's prize. Ooh. So, here it is, it's the gold trophy. Yes, the famous solid gold trophy, all the way from Birmingham's Jewellery Quarter, folks. You are playing for that, so there is no uh, Googling or cheating allowed. Uh, no writing the answers in the comments. And without any further ado, I think, uh, yes, we'll have enough of Bruce. There you go, Brucey, off you go. <laughs> we'll go on to the uh, the pictures round. So, 
the, um, the just to get you in the mood to get back to the 80s this is a this is a, a reminiscing quiz really uh, it's just to sort of remember you know a brilliant decade so who can tell me what song this is on my t-shirt so that's that's not a question this is just to get you in the mood so you can type this in the comments if you want but obviously not the um, not when it comes to the actual answers so if you can see that that says good times underneath there so if you uh, if you know what song that was, it, type that into the comments. Is it anyone? can't be Chic because that was the seventies. No, it's not Good Times by Chic. It's a it's a yes, an eighties one. So we'll let you have a ponder about that while we crack on with what is affectionately known as round one because it is in fact the first round. Now, the clue we hear in the uh, in the thing is cars of the eighties. So if you don't know much about cars, but there is someone in your household who does, um, I would grab them if I were you because you're going to need them. So um, cars of the 80s. Now this was a request from somebody last time because I did singers from the 80s or something like that last time. And they said, what about cars from the 80s? So I had a lot of fun putting this together. And um, we'll get on with the uh, first one. So what I want you to do is write down the make and model of the car. So if you think it's a Nissan Micra, uh, right, Nissan Micra, you get the full point. If you just write down one half, if you just write down Nissan or Micra, you get half a point, okay? So you're keeping your own scores and we'll get underway with um, picture number one. Now, some of these cars are really good and really cool. Some not so cool in the <laughs> 80s. Many of the ones that I used to drive around in the 80s are not so cool, unfortunately. <laughs> So there we are. So that's question number one. What I'll do is I'll run through them all one by one and then I'll put them all on the screen so that you can zoom in and um, and have a few more minutes to, uh, to think about them. So that is car number one. I need the make and model of that car. It was a popular car in the 80s. Now a very similar car to number one. Um, what is the make and model of that particular vehicle? Okay, so I think it was very similar to number one. So that's that's number two, right? Same colour. Same colour, yes, <laughs> yeah, same colour. That's about all you know, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not well up on cars. Pe at Penny all. doesn't drive, so <laughs> I so she, she knows very little about cars other than it takes her to the pub and the wine bar. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Now this was a dream car. This was for a lot of people, including myself. That was a uh, that, sorry about the smallness of that picture. It was the best one I could get with it all in uh, from a side view because a lot of them were front views, and you needed to see the um, what was known as the whale tail on the back uh, to be able to get the uh, the full name of that car. So um, so yeah, if you got the make of the model of that car. Again, it was excellent, and you're writing these down on your sheets, not in the comments, just as a reminder. So that's that one. And thanks for joining us, all uh, 66 of you. 67 now. Wow. Thanks for joining us. Those that have just joined, don't worry. I will display all these uh, pictures again, and you will have a chance to just review them before we uh, we go for the um, answers. So uh, that's car number three. Let's go on to car number four. <laughs> now, I did say there was cars similar to cars that I was driving in the 80s. This is one of them. Um, so we, we've had three pretty cool cars and um, and not so cool, unfortunately. <laughs> Even the colour, I mean, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, <laughs> dear. Yeah, dreadful. You did have a brown car. I did have you? a brown car, yeah, I had a brown me from metro. Yeah, when we first... Well, I had an orange Allegro <laughs> and then I had a brown metro, so I was yeah. going through the worst colours. <laughs> hmm, yes. Anyway, that's that was number four. So this is car number five. Um, getting a bit better, still more of a sort of a, a car your dad would drive around in, really, um, or your uncle or whatever, whatever. So that's car number five, and I will display them all in uh, in a short while. Oh, Heidi's on. I just saw Heidi. Heidi's in the comments there. Hello, Heidi, our, f our famous pirate and winner of the uh, <laughs> the Wham T-shirt from the. Uh, oh. Heidi won the uh, the Wham T-shirt from was it the last eighties quiz or or a rock oh, quiz? I can't, I can't remember. There's so many quizzes. We do all these Couldn't quizzes. Be rock Wham. You can have a Wham. Uh, no, it must have been rock. No, it was a rock. Was it? it was the rock. 
because I made a joke out of it saying oh. that, you know, it was a completely inappropriate prize. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But he Heidi seems to like it anyway. She hasn't, she hasn't written to me to say she, <laughs> she doesn't. She hasn't sent it back. She hasn't sent it back, so, you know, I take it no news is good news. <laughs> now, moving on to a bit more of a cooler car. Picture number six. What make and model of car is that? It's famously been in a TV show uh, in recent years. That's that one. Car number six. Beautiful car, actually. Very, very, very desirable wow. car, yes. And then we'll go on to another one. This was one I absolutely would have loved to have been able to afford in the 80s, I tell you. Number seven. That is one of the iconic cars of the uh, of the 80s, I think. In my opinion. And we go from two fantastic cars, and uh, unfortunately, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to subject your eyes to uh, this monstrosity. So this was um, this was a car that was about. Now be very careful with this one because there were two possible answers for this one, and um, you need to. Well, you've got a fifty-fifty chance, obviously, if you uh, if you think you know what it is. That's that one. Another car coming up next is one that I would have uh, I would have loved to have owned in the eighties. Is that one? That was an absolutely fantastic car in the 80s. So what make and model of car is that? And if you know the actual full model of it, if, if you know what I mean, you know what I mean, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what car is that, uh, everyone? So we're coming on to the last one before I display them all in one go for you to review. This is car number 10, make and model of that car. Um, I'll give you another little clue because I think that's a harder one. This is a, a foreign uh, vehicle. It's not a UK produced or a UK company vehicle. Yeah. So it's a foreign company vehicle. So let me, uh, Penny's busy tapping away in the background here. She's probably dealing with some inquiries as she has a habit of doing. So I will then display all the cars in one go and leave them on the screen for you to zoom in if you want to um, pinch in on your on your tablet or zoom in on your laptop these are the cars hopefully you've managed to drag someone away from the TV um, who knows a bit about cars if you don't um, if you do great um, so there we are I've got one really yeah. oh that's <laughs> very impressive <laughs> for me yeah, yeah. as I say if you look at quest uh, pictures one and two the similarity, I didn't realise until I'd done this how similar those two cars were. I think number one first started life in the 70s really, um, but it was still popular, still going in the uh, in the 80s, fading a bit. Um, but the other cars are, are definitely uh, 80s cars. Yeah, mm. definitely. Still manufactured in the 80s. So. Has, has anybody guessed what Nigel's t-shirt is? Oh yes. If, if, Let... if you want to make your guesses in the comments. It's the t-shirt, not the cars. Yes. Let me go back to uh, let me just go back to reveal the t-shirt. There we are. So there's the t-shirt. I bought that uh, last week for this quiz. So uh, if you can see, that word says "good times" underneath. And um, if you look at the pictures above, uh, you will hopefully be able to see what the title of the song is. Well. It's a lyric from the song, actually. I should have asked this as a question. What a waste. Yeah. <laughs> what, was I, what was I thinking, Ben? What was I thinking? Madness. Absolute. Anyway, so that's, um, that's the pictures uh, for you to look at. And uh, what we'll do now is reveal the answers. So you're marking your own. And what I'm going to do this time, because we've got so many on, there's no way we can do our normal leaderboard because we'll be here till midnight. So what, <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to do a, um, uh, a, a callback. So I'll, I'll, after it, I'll say um, anyone got 10, anyone got 9, anyone got 8. I think I'll probably stop at 8 because, um, you know, otherwise we will be here all night. So, uh, oh. so there we are. Phil's guessed the band. Ah, uh, the band, yes, yes Phil. Oh. <laughs> my old mucker from school, he's got the band, but he doesn't know the name of the song. Oh, I'm sure he does. No, I'm sure he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Cars then, answers time. Um, let me let me go through them like this, I think is probably the best way. So, car number one is a Triumph TR7. Triumph TR7 gives you the full point for that. If you said Triumph 
or TR7, you get half point for each part, okay? So that's number one. Answer to number two is a Toyota MR2. Beautiful car. I still think it's a good-looking car now. Brilliant. Um, Toyota MR2. If anyone had any of these cars, shout up, by the way, because uh, I'd be interested to see uh, if anyone had some of the more cooler cars. Um, so Toyota MR2, you get half point for Toyota, half point for MR2. And then number three, this was a Ford Sierra Cosworth. So Ford Sierra Cosworth will get you the um, will get you the points. That's what that car was. And moving on. Now <laughs> here we are. This sad uh, looking vehicle is a Triumph Acclaim. So that is a Triumph Acclaim. Uh, I actually knew someone who had a Triumph Acclaim, and uh, it was as awful as it looks. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> The only acclaim to fame was uh, was it used to break down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this here, actually not a bad car, um, but more of an older person's car. Younger people really wouldn't be buying this. Was a an Austin Montego. Austin Montego. That's that one. And this one here is an Audi Quattro. An Audi Quattro. I think it's actually an Audi A4 Quattro. But if you say Audi Quattro, then Lisa Stevens, you are absolutely spot on. Well done. You've got it. That's it. Um, right, Audi Quattro is that one. I'll give you the points for Audi Quattro. If you said A4 Quattro, then you can have the points as well. Now then, this is the dream car. And I think most people who are of a certain age will have fond memories of, uh, of these being on the road. This is a Peugeot 205 GTI. It was a big rival for the, um, for the Golf GTI, actually. Fantastic. Now, ah, here's a bit of a, bit of a curveball here. This is, um, if you said Austin Princess, then you've only got half a point because it was an Austin, but it, that particular model is the Ambassador which uh, I'm led to believe was the slightly more posher uh, model of that car, if that can be believed. Next up, we have the Ford Fiesta XR2i. That's the Ford Fiesta XR2, and that probably the i version, I guess. So XR2i is the model of that one. And this is the Toyota Celica Supra. Toyota Celica Supra. So, there are your pictures in their entirety if anyone needs a um if anyone needs any of the answers reading out just shout out there's some some queries about oh uh, you you need to read that because that it means nothing to me as a non-car driver oh. <laughs> phil's asking uh, does he get a half the no Honda you get you get nothing for that sense. no you know cars phil i'm not having that <laughs> you know cars right so um, what we're going to do now, you've marked your own, hopefully. So what we can do is, um, is do a shout out. So let's go back from 10. So say uh, me in the comments if you got 10 out of 10. So if you've got 10 out of 10, say me in the comments. And Ooh, then somebody. someone said they have. Yeah, Sue Padupa. Oh, Jane, Jane, this five and a half. Uh, Lisa Stevens. Oh yes, tens. Yep. Yeah. Wow, Lisa. And Lisa got the uh, the song as well. I tell you what, Queen of the Eighties is our Lisa. <laughs> Way. <Wee. laughs> Amanda's loving the look. Got nine out of ten. Yes, I've done my hair in an eighties style, uh, Amanda. This time. <laughs> yeah. So I think we've got oh, we've got yes. two, we've had two with tens so far, uh, haven't we? Yeah, I have to keep my eyes on it. Yes, I'll yes. Miss as it scrolls. Oh, let me read out. Uh, Michelle, uh, number one was a Triumph um, TR7. Number two was a Toyota MR2. And number three was a Ford Sierra Cosworth. So if you can, uh, if you can see that. Oh, nine and a half. No. <laughs> Margaret's got a half out of ten. Margaret. Yeah. Margaret, what do we say all the time, Margaret? It's the <laughs> taking part. And by the way, uh, happy Burns night for Monday, I believe it is. Yes. Our local butcher is doing haggis stuffed uh, chicken. I might go and get one tomorrow. 
So, um, so we've got a few on ten. Um, yes, um, let me. I'm, I'm still seeing them come up. So, super duper, Lisa Stevens, James Hipwell, I think has got ten out of ten. On nine out of ten, we've got Amanda, and we've got Hazel Wiseman, and we've got oh, and Dawn as well. It's got nine. Out of 10. Oh, Dawn, yes. Um, Happy birthday, Dawn, if you didn't hear earlier. Jane Roger has got nine and a half out of ten. Oh, we've got uh, oh, Margaret Wendell. Uh, another Margaret. Margaret Wendell got, got zero. zero. Oh, oh Margaret. Oh, might have to be a wooden spoon. Oh, yes, we, we normally have our, our other our other good friend, Margaret, does uh, does the wooden spoon for us normally, but uh, you're vying for that. Anyway, um, yes, the... Ah, sometimes he's from... Yes, the it's, uh, let me put the camera back on. Yes, he's from there. That's it's it. The first track. First on track side one. on uh, on that. And that is an actual vinyl copy of the Dare album. Because we are vinyl. We're vinyl DJs. DJs. We seamless that was, Pen. Oh. Right. Shall we get on with uh, what is affectionately known as round two, because it is the second round. Yes, please. They cry. So we've got our uh, we've got our people at the top of the table. We've got one or two people in the yes. uh, in the bottom of the table, and we're going to get on to round two, which is. Um, is 80s trivia this is so 80s trivia can be anything about the 80s this so uh, the first one is in 1989 the Exxon Valdez spilled a load of oil where did it spill the oil where did it spill the oil you get half a point if you say um, the sort of country or, or the, the part of the world where it was and you get the full point if you say the actual place uh, within that country so uh, so there we are if you know the answer you'll know what I mean by that so so if you think it was uh, I don't know in um, Ireland um, then you say Ireland if you think it was uh, in uh, I don't know Bantry Bay <laughs> it's Bantry Bay in Ireland. Bantry Bay in Ireland. I should have thought of this before. Yeah. Like, <laughs> seamless this quiz, folks. So, in 19, question number one. In 1989, the Exxon Valdez spilled its load of oil where? And again, I will display I will display the um, answers on the screen, uh, the questions on the screen. Um, so, if you just uh, bear with me. So, question number two for all the IT professionals out there. I know someone's pricked his ears up at this one, haven't they, Phil? <laughs> when was Microsoft's Windows 1.0 operating system launched? Question number two. When was Microsoft's Windows 1.0 operating system launched? Is your question number two. Oh, Pete's on. Hello, Pete. Pete Sparrow. How are you? I haven't uh, been missing you, Pete, with our rock nights down at Fletcher's. So, um, oh, it's not Pete. Yeah, it is Pete. Yeah. Um, question number three. What year did Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer get married? What year did Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer get married? Question number four is, in 1983, the first mobile phone launched for the public was launched by which company? In 1983, the first mobile phone launched for the public was launched by which company? I think they were sort of military mobile phones before then, but this was like the ones that, uh, that you and I could buy. 1983, the first mobile phone was launched for the public by which company? Is question number four. Question number five. Which Swedish player won Wimbledon champion... Sorry. Which Swedish player won Wimbledon's championship men's singles in 1988? Which Swedish player won the Wimbledon men's championships men's singles in 1988? Uh, I'm already regretting this next question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> Bovine spongiform encephalopathy is otherwise known as what? Bovine spongiform encephalopathy is otherwise known as what? And, and I'm not looking for the initials. I'm looking for what it was commonly known as in the 80s. Very, very famous. All in the news in the 80s. 
devastating for uh, for that community of, uh, of people that it affected. Um, so bovine spongiform encephalopathy was otherwise known as what? Is your question number six. On to number seven. South Africa's new Prime Minister in 1989 started to dismantle apartheid. What was his name? I'll read that again. South Africa's new Prime Minister in 1989 started to dismantle apartheid. What was his name? Those, some of those are, are fairly tough, I think, so I, I made a few more easier ones to, uh, to sort of balance things out a bit there. Oh, okay. there. So, oh, heart I am. You are. <laughs> In 1984, Michael Jackson's hair caught fire during a commercial promoting what? In 1984, Michael Jackson's hair caught fire during a commercial promoting what? Is your question number eight. Question number nine is the first Disney park to be built outside the US was opened in which country in 1983? The first Disney park to be built outside the United States was opened in which country in 1983? And your final one, you can see that on the screen yourselves. Where were the 1984 Summer Olympics held? So I'll leave those on the screen for you to have a ponder, um, see how you get on with those. Good to see you, see 62, 63 people watching, that's great news. Marvellous. Yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, I was going to do another little thing as well, uh, 80s related. While you're, um, while you're still looking at the questions on the screen and finalising your answers, uh, I was going to ask people if they would, um, when they went clubbing, Hopefully, well, probably in the 80s for most people on here. But uh, when you went clubbing when you were first old enough, uh, where was the sort of go-to club that you would go to all the time and which town? So I'll start us off with Millionaires in Birmingham because I'm from Birmingham. Penny? Snobs in, in Birmingham. Birmingham. Snobs in Birmingham. So, yes, if you want to uh, take part in that little quiz within a quiz, just say what's the uh, what the name of the club was. And um, I'm guessing we're going to get some fairly famous uh, club names coming up in the comments here. So, uh, so yeah, so if you want to type your club names in and uh, we'll all have a look at where you used to go. Some of the club names were, were very uh, amusing. Um, some of them, uh, yeah, like the, uh, the Dome in Birmingham wasn't amusing, but it was a famous club, wasn't it? Uh-huh. And Snobs was a right. famous club. We've got some... Eight. Ian Strachan, Planet Earth, oh, Newcastle. Oh, yeah, Planet Earth, look at that. Lorraine Stone, Warehouse in Maidstone. I know Phil, my school friend on here. I've always, I've always been oh, very oh, envious of this. Fast here. He went to the, <laughs> he went to the Rum Runner in Birmingham, obviously. Where, I never uh, got to the Rum no, Runner. No, I never got there. Actually, it shut oh, down the, before. Oh, uh, I was at the sister club, uh, Snobs, but uh, yes, yeah. Hollywood's in Romford. Wow. Crystal Rooms, Hereford. The Empire, Leicester Square. Whoa, Paula. Mm. Well, you dark horse, you are, Paula. Joe the Lady. <laughs> oh, Joe the Palace. Lady's on. Hello, Joe. How are you? Palace Blackpool. Skindles. Tower Ballroom. Oh, hey, Tower Ballroom, oh, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, Dawn. 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 Oh, oh, Vanessa, Millionaires. And I think I've been to, um, I think I've been yeah, to Tramps in Worcester. Top rank wedding, stowaway, Mr. Smith. Well, no, no. Cinderella's pearly. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go through the answers then. Uh, you can carry on typing Edwards those in. Number eight. Um... You can carry on typing in. Right, Pen. I need to yes. do the answers. Oh, sorry. Carry on. So, in um, in nineteen eighty nine, the um, the Exxon Valdez uh, Exxon Valdez spilled its load of oil where. Now, if you said Alaska, you'll get half a point. If you said Prince William Sound in Alaska then you'll get the full point for that one. So it's either half a point for Alaska or the full point for Prince William Sound, Alaska. When was Microsoft's Windows 1.0 operating system launched? Well, that was in 1985. That was launched in 1985. Uh, in what year did Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer get married? They got married in 1981. 1981 is your answer to question number three. Number four. In 1983, the first mobile phone launch for the public was mo was launched by Motorola. Motorola launched the first mobile phone. Obviously, it was a great big brick 
um, sort of a Wall Street type phone. Um, or even there were some versions with a, like a curly wire that went to what looked like a car battery underneath. So uh, that was that. The Swedish player that won Wimbledon in 1988, uh, Stefan Edberg. Stefan Edberg is your answer to question number five. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy is otherwise known as mad cow disease. So it was BSC, it was always shortened to, but mad cow disease was what it was known as, um, apart from its, uh, well, Latin name, I suppose that is. Now then, South Africa's Prime Minister, who uh, dismantled apartheid, who came to power in 1989, that was, uh, uh, that was F.W. de Klerk. F.W. de Klerk was the name of the Prime Minister who started to dismantle the apartheid regime. 1984, Michael Jackson's hair caught fire while he was advertising Pepsi. I think there was some fireworks or something in the background and, uh, and some sparks fell on his hair, unfortunately, caught fire. He suffered some burns, actually, which is uh, very, very sad. So, oh, so next one is um, the place where the uh, Disneyland was opened, the first place in 1983 outside of the US, was Disneyland Tokyo. So it was opened in Japan. So you can have a point for if you say Japan. And then the 19, um, what was it, 1984? 1984 Summer Olympics were held in Los Angeles. So if you tot up your scores, and we'll do a shout out. So if you've got 20 out of 20, or 19 out of 20, if you stick your scores in now and just tell us what you've got, and um, and then you know we'll we'll do a little bit of a shout out for uh, for those impressive scores. If you've got none still uh, or very low scores and you don't mind us uh, embarrassing you in public on the internet, Aww. then shout those out as well. <laughs> no, we won't do that. No, we won't do that. We won't do that. Don't don't put them on if you uh, if you don't want it. But yes, if you've got 19, 18 or more out of twenty, actually is uh, is going to be a good score because those questions there. I'll just display them again. Those questions there are a variety of very difficult questions, I have to say. You'll be glad to know the next round is a music round. So um, so I think a lot of people who come on our quizzes are music fans. They like our music quizzes. So let me just tell you about that because this is, um, this is a sort of montage of the quizzes. We've started doing these since March last year, since the first uh, lockdown and COVID outbreak and whatever. And um, we're DJs normally, and obviously we've got nothing to do, nowhere to DJ, the pubs were shut, and blah, blah, blah. So we started doing these quizzes, and we started doing a pop quiz. And it's grown and grown, and we really enjoy them now, actually. Penny does uh, her pop quiz. Uh, our, our other DJ, DJ Ozzy, who is never seen in the same room as me, does a rock music quiz, which is uh, popular. And then this is a new quiz, this Back to the 80s quiz. We started it on... Boxing Day, was it? Yes, Boxing Day. And this next Friday, Penny's doing her first ever Back to the 70s quiz. So a similar type thing to this, not just music, all 70s related. And then we've got the Birmingham quiz. And can I just say for the 70s quiz, if you're into your 80s, don't be put off by it being the 70s quiz. Because I'm trying to gauge, you know, gauge it to the level that will appeal to... 80s people too so yes it'll be sort of childhood things from the 70s you're doing like tv adverts and things aren't uh, you? tv yeah. adverts and chocolate bars is it or something cho yeah chocolate bars yeah. toys and games yeah so uh, you will TV, know you will know this yeah. stuff you will you will know the 70s so don't worry don't think it's too too long ago um you will know this stuff so Without any further ado, how are we getting on? Right, okay. scores well, we've, coming got, in? we've got some pretty decent scores oh thanks here. jane halls that's very nice of you to say so very kind of you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we, we do get a lot of regulars on these quizzes, and we, we, we tend to... St we start to know people now. We know their little yes. habits, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> and they send us little messages afterwards, which is always good fun. So, um, oh, yeah. uh, we've got Ian suggesting the 90s, oh, the 90s quiz. Yeah, it could, well, could be a possibility. We could... Uh, well, yeah. well uh, my next quiz I'm going to do is, is my Birmingham quiz, which I realise will appeal to only a section <laughs> of, uh, of people on Facebook... <laughs> <laughs> but but if you know anything about the Peaky Blinders, then you should be okay on this quiz. Um, and and I, you can guess a lot of the answers actually. So let's go. Let's crack on. So, okay. So um, with uh, fifteen out of twenty, we've got Joe the Lady. Oh, Joe the Lady. Yes. With seventeen out, of she's 20, too young to remember the eighties. Joe is. I think you know she's she's oh. probably only about twenty five or so, uh -huh. twenty twenty one or something. With seventeen out of twenty, we've got Jane Roger. 
And with 17 and a half out of 20, we've got Stephen Doherty. Oh, Stephen, Stephen Doherty, yes. Doherty. Stephen's been on before. And Susan Stephen's Cooper. done really well before. Oh, let me tell you this, folks. When we did this as a trial on, on Boxing Day, this is funny, this is... We were, we were asking a question about Rennie and Renato, obviously. Oh, yes. You save your love, Rennie and Renato. Naff sort of 80s song. <laughs> and there was a bloke on called Brian. I can't remember his surname now, mm. but he came on. And he <laughs> he announced to the amazement of all of us on doing that quiz on Boxing Day that he played guitar on stage for Rennie and Renato. <laughs> I mean, how about that? It's what are the chances? World. What are the small chances? World, isn't it? What are the chances? Right. Hopefully you've recharged your drink, you're, uh, you've got your pen and paper ready, we'll get on with number three now, which is a music round. So, question number one. Which Billy Joel song, a US number one in 1989, listed over a hundred headline events between 1949 and 1989? Which Billy Joel song, a US number one in 89, listed over a hundred headlines Headline events between 1949 and 1989. <laughs> yeah, come on, Joe, you are. <laughs> We've got Pete Sparrow also on 17. 17, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely the banter, by the way. Comments coming in, the, the nightclubs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I've got a joke for you. Do you want to hear my joke? Oh, no. Yes, they cry. I'm going to tell, I'm going to <laughs> I don't tell you. I know what it is. I'm so. going to tell you anyway. This is an 80s joke, my favourite joke from the 80s. Where did Kylie Minogue go for her lunch oh. when she was filming Neighbours? Where did Kylie Minogue go for her lunch when she was filming Neighbours? Answer to Jason's Donovan. There you go. Oh, groan, <laughs> groan, groan. Oh, I am sorry about that. Oh, sorry. I'm going to have to read question one now. I've forgotten what it was myself. Question one again, which Billy Joel song, a, num a US number one in 89, listed over 100 headline events between 1949 and 1989? That's question one. Question number two. In 1988, who told us, don't worry, be happy? Don't worry, be happy was the song. Who was the artiste? Oh, Dan. Dan, 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 you've only just joined. I yes. told you at lunchtime what time it started. <laughs> you've missed half of it. <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. Stay on, Dan. We're having a good yeah, laugh here. Ju and just uh, write down your answers. Yes. Not, not in the comments. Ah, uh, yes. Dan, anyone who's just joined, you write down the answers on a sheet of paper. Don't type them in the comments. Um, number three. Which American choreographer had a smash hit with Mickey in 1982? Which American choreographer had a smash hit with Mickey in 1982? Yes, I am sorry, Lynette. It, I, I'm not known for my, uh, my jokes. Um, <laughs> so, yes, that, that is probably one of my better ones. <laughs> it doesn't sound much about the others, No, does it? it doesn't mean really. <laughs> hmm. Which American choreographer had a smash hit with Mickey in 1982? So you're writing it down on your sheets of paper. Question number four. Which rock guitarist provided the guitar solo for Michael Jackson's Beat It in 1983? Which famous rock guitarist provided the guitar solo for Michael Jackson's Beat It in 1983? It's question number four. And question number five. Belinda Carlisle was the lead singer of which 1980s girl band before achieving her solo success? Belinda Carlisle was the lead singer of which 1980s girl band before achieving her solo success? I will display these on the screen as always when I've uh, gone through the run through. Number six, which Madonna album became the first by a female artist to sell over five million copies in America? Which Madonna album became the first by a female artist to sell over five million copies in America? That was question six. Question number seven. One More Night and Two Hearts 
were US number one singles in the 1980s for which singer? One More Night and Two Hearts were US number one singles in the 1980s for which singer? Number eight is a lyrics question. I know Margaret loves these. I think Dawn likes these as well. Lynette likes these. A lot of people like the lyrics question. So here's a lyrics one for you. Name the song from the first two lines. I've never been closer. I've tried to understand. Name the song from the first two lines. I've never been closer. I've tried to understand. Question number nine. Which band did Lionel Richie leave in 1982 to pursue a solo career? Which band did Lionel Richie leave in 1982 to pursue a solo career? And finally, in your music round, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder had a hit single in 1982 with which song? So I shall leave those on the screen for you for a, a short while. Oh, can I... Uh... You're interjecting, are you? I'm interjecting, ah, yes. Penny's interjecting, yes. everyone. Yes. Uh, yes. You're going, you're going at a um, quite a... Quick Fast pace. Pace, yes. Ah. So just meaning you can slow down a little because there's still plenty of time. Oh, so, yes. yes. Yes, there's plenty so of time. We can have a bit of banter, perhaps. Or I could do some more adverts. <laughs> 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 and I'll tell you what I can do. I've got, I've got this, which was going to be... So this is a supplementary uh, little morsel of, um, of entertainment for you. Ooh. I know, yes. How about that? That is a supplementary morsel of entertainment for you. Um, while you're doing that, hopefully you've read those questions and you've finalised your answers. I'm going to just chuck up some 80s pictures from a quiz I did a little while ago. Um, because I'm into recycling, you see, this is what this is all about. <laughs> so, uh, so these are recycled ones. So, because there's a lot of people on here who haven't been on before, so all those that have been on before, um, you'll know these. But, um, these this isn't part of the quiz, this is just a bit of a uh, a coffee break type uh, round, if you like. Um, so if you have a look at those and see how many you would have got in the uh, in the Boxing Day quiz from those, so, um, so that's that. So let's go back to the actual music round and uh, let's remind ourselves of the questions which are there. And we shall run through the answers if you've had enough time to do that. So, uh, question number one, the Billy Joel song, uh, it was number one in 1989, was We Didn't Start the Fire. We Didn't Start the Fire. And he listed 100 um, headline events in that song. Now, this is a tricky one. Uh, 1988, Who Told Us Don't Worry, Be Happy? That uh, was Bobby McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin had a hit with Don't Worry, Be Happy in the 80s, 1988. Slightly easier, the American choreographer who had a smash hit with Mickey was Tony Basil. Now, on this point, Tony Basil, right? I don't know how old you think Tony Basil is, but when I was researching this, Tony Basil is unbelievably 76 Wow. 76. I guess she might have changed Whoa. slightly in appearance. Not really. No. Right, I bet people will be Googling her after yeah. this quiz. Yeah. Google Tony Basil and look for recent pictures of her. She still yeah. looks like yeah. Tony Basil. Or still yeah. looks as she used to look. Yeah. Amazing. That's impressive. I don't know. It'd be like uh, What's Her Face um, who got married about 20 times. <laughs> what was her name? I've no idea who you're talking Joan about. Collins. <laughs> Joan Collins, you know, is a, still looks all right. Well, I haven't seen recent photos. <laughs> anyway, um, that was Tony Basil, answer to question number three. She had a hit with Mickey in 1982. And then the rock guitarist who, uh, who did the guitar solo on Michael Jackson's Beat It, Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen was the rock guitarist. And then the band that Belinda Carlisle was the lead singer of before she, uh, she did her own solo stuff was the Go-Go's. So, uh, so that was the Go Go's. Um, Margaret's saying we would have got ten. I would have got ten. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the Madonna album. That, uh, I think that she's talking about the pictures. Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Ah yes. Sorry. It's a, a bit confusing, confusing myself here. You, 
Yeah. Yes, I've thrown that into confusion. Yeah, people. it would be and good confu- to have it confuse after myself. This, after you told me you told me to put that in. No, you said no. slow down. No, I said to slow down, but I didn't say to. I anyway. can <laughs> yeah, carry on. Carry oh. on. You can put the pictures up after the. Finished, I'll do that afterwards. Yes. Right, number five is um, the album was like a virgin. Like a virgin is the answer to number five. And then number six, the Phil Collins is the answer to that one. He had hits with One More Night and Two Hearts uh, in the US. Phil Collins is your answer to question number seven. The song, I've Never Been Closer, I Tried to Understand, is Temptation by Heaven 17. The song title I'm looking for is Temptation. And then the band that Lionel Richie left in 1982 was the Commodores. And the song that... uh, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder sang uh, together was Ebony and Ivory. So we're now up to third round, so it must be out of 30 by now. So I don't think anyone's got uh, full marks, have they? So we'll have a look at uh, yeah. anyone got 29, 28 or 27. Uh, if you want to mark your own. And, Probably uh, anyone 25 or over. 25 or over is, is a respectable, well, it's a good score, actually, because yeah. uh, there's a variety of uh, topics and questions here on and this quiz. And maybe you could put the picture round up now. But oh, just, right, okay, yeah? yes, yes, good thinking. Yes. Yes, right, okay. Not, well, not for... While you're, um, while you're uh, typing up, uh, oh, 27, Stephen Doherty, fantastic. Joe the lady, 24, there she is. Phil, 21, good score. Oh, Stacey, 22. Some good scores coming in here. Yeah, in the oh, 20s, yeah. oh, I'm surprised, you know. Yes. So, um, so, so uh, very clever. So that's that's the that's a picture round from the last 80s quiz, just to sort of uh, show you um, what I did there. And obviously this time I did cars of the 80s. If you've got suggestions, if you want to leave us a message on our Facebook page um, for... 80s pictures around obviously I've done uh, 80s singers and and uh, and the like I've done 80s cars um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions if you think that there's a, a good pictures round that would go well in this quiz um, yeah I'm happy to uh, to research it and do that Google is my best friend <laughs> yeah so let's go well, back to uh, uh, let's just flick yes, the answers well. up again so that people can uh, double check some very good scores on there. I've got my tiebreaker tonight, folks. My famous tiebreaker, which uh, I may or may not need, but I'm going to do it anyway because uh, I've gone and done it now. So, you know, that's uh, that's how it goes. Um, so let's go back to moi. So um, Penny, meanwhile, is is busily um, um, trying to stop things from scrolling off the top of the screen. Yeah, actually. I'm trying to make sure <laughs> I've got all the. Oh, eighties um, footballers, yes. I'm trying to make sure I've got the top scores. 80s, uh, yes, Dan. I've done the one on cars. Hang on, Phil. I am too young yeah, to remember it, the eight. You are not too young to remember the eight. <laughs> right. This is this is for Dan Donnelly, my uh, my good friend from work, who missed round one because he was late joining. So that was the cars round, Dan. Um, so if you have a quick scan on that before we go into the final round for the night, and just uh, just see how you'd have got on. I'll probably email them to you afterwards. Uh, because I've got to crack on with the quiz anyway. And, well, we've got a bit of time at the moment. Do you want to uh, mention forthcoming events? Yes, forthcoming events. So those were the cars. So here we are. So we're doing these quizzes on a Friday, 8 o'clock, on, on live stream on Facebook, on our on this page, on the Vinyl Revival page. So Penny is uh, is doing a pop, a retro pop quiz. Uh, yes. But next Friday... She's doing a back to the seventies quiz. Yes. <laughs> so. So I'm going to have. Oh, she's going to have. I'm going to have rounds on television. Yep. Food and drink adverts. Yep. Toys and games. Yes. And a general knowledge round. Oh, okay, that's so, good. Uh, so it's going to be all sorts of stuff, and you don't. If you like your eighties stuff, you'll probably know a lot of this seventies stuff because I'm trying to pitch it. Uh, that it will appeal to people who were children in the 70s uh, as well as adults in the 70s so you know hopefully if people who are adults in the 80s they were were children in the 70s well that makes sense (laughs) (laughs) okay it'll be stuff a lot of it stuff that um even if you 
Yeah, I don't remember the 70s much. A lot of it is stuff that carried over into the 80s. So, so the, these events are on our Facebook page if you want to see the details of them and a little bit of a... Uh, little bit of a, uh, a summary of what's involved. The 70s quiz is next Friday. Then uh, I'm doing my first ever Birmingham quiz, which has been requested by at least one person. Um, so I'll be doing that. Is it yourself? Yes, it's is me. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> come on Matt, anyway, just, just for a laugh, to be honest with you. Just get a drink and, and, and I don't know. Margaret, you're probably not gonna do very well at this Birmingham quiz, but come on anyway, do come on. And then um, DJ Ozzy, uh, who he's never seen in the same room as me, is doing a rock quiz on the 19th of Feb. But it's all on our Facebook page, everyone. So let's go back to this here. And uh, have, have we got anyone anyone with a high score? Have you managed yes, to capture that? Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Oh, Ooh, well, hang well on, hang on. Yes, so we have got, we have got a leader, some sort of leaderboard, have we? It's very difficult well, because got... they all scroll off the top of the screen because there's so many of uh, you. Someone on. said they've got 34 and a half. I think it must be 24. <laughs> 24 and We've a only half. had three rounds. Yeah. You, can't, can't, you can't possibly have 34 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I, I, yes. I, yes, right. it must be 24 and a half. Yes. Mm. And go one moment while I just... Do, 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 do. Right, okay. Right. Um, so, we like? 24 out of 30, we have Joe the Lady. Well done, Joe. We have 24 and a half, I yep. believe, out of 30, we have Super Duper. Okay. With 25, we've got Jane Roger. Yes. 26 and a half, we have Lisa Stevens. Lisa, who guessed um, the name of the song from this t shirt. Here we are. That's impressive. Yes. And with 27 are. and a half, we have Stephen. Stephen Doherty, yes. yes. Now, Stephen did well in our in one of our earlier quizzes. I haven't yes. seen him for a, a couple of quizzes, but he's he's normally uh, pretty good. So let's uh, let's crack on. This is the last round. Uh, it's 10 to 9, so we, we are going to. Uh, we are going to finish a bit early, actually. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying mm. to slow down a bit. Yes. Well, do you know? Do you, no, do you know why? It's it's because normally we go through all of the uh, scores, don't we? Because yes. we don't have this many on, so yes. that's what it is. Yes, I'll try to figure it out now. Okay, this is your last round. This is TV and film. TV and film. So if you were watching TV in the eighties or you saw a few films, you'll be all right at this. So this is this is for everyone. This is so. Question number one. You get half a point if you've only got one half of this person's name. The full point if you get the full name. So, question one, if you're gonna have an 80s quiz, you've got to ask this question. Who shot JR? There you go. Who shot JR? Now that's that's put the cat amongst the pigeons. I have no doubt about that because it's so long ago. And I don't know if it's repeated. It must be repeated on one of the channels on Netflix or something or whatever I'm guessing but I mean who watches it nowadays who shot JR famous massive event everyone was talking about it it was it was you know people were wearing t-shirts with uh, who shot JR and God knows what <laughs> so who shot JR if you know the full name you get the full point if you only know the first name or the last name or if you know the first name then you get half a point question number two the car in Knight Rider is called Kit K-I-T-T but what does Kit stand for the car in Knight Rider is called Kit, K-I-T-T. -T. But what does Kit stand for? They do get easier, folks. <laughs> Question number three in your final round. In Starsky and Hutch, what is the name of their streetwise snitch? In Starsky and Hutch, what is the name of their streetwise snitch? Snitch, who was also very cool. <laughs> Question number three again in Starsky and Hutch What is the name of their streetwise snitch? It was also very cool. Number four What type of dogs? starred in Magnum P.I. And I'll come on to it in a minute. I'll, I'll ask you a supplementary question about that, which you don't get any extra points for, but if you know the names of those two dogs, I would be impressed. When I Googled this, I, I thought, oh yes, I remember them now, yes, yes. But what type of dogs were they? What breed of dogs starred in Magnum P.I.? They were two very fine looking dogs. Another Dallas question. Larry Hagman played JR in Dallas, 
But who played his long-suffering wife, Sue Ellen, who was known as a drunk and an unfit mother? <laughs> you said that bad. Like, thing, like you? a... <laughs> yes. Penny, Penny went back on the drink soon after she uh, gave birth it to that children. It wasn't that soon. <laughs> I think with the second one you were drinking through it. I was not. <laughs> I think I had one drink on my birthday. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, a slippery slope that is. Anyway, um, so Larry Hagman played J.R. in Dallas, but who played his long-suffering wife, Sue Ellen? That's question number five. Question number six. What was Tom Cruise's call sign in Top Gun? What was Tom Cruise's call sign in Top Gun? And if you've just joined us, yes, Sue Rushton, you've got it spot on. Zeus and Apollo were the name of the dogs. Yeah. Uh, so you're writing the answers down, apart from that, that supplementary one, you're writing the answers down on a sheet of paper, not in the comments for those that have just joined. I'm talking to you, Bob, because <laughs> you did that last time. So what was Tom Cruise's call sign in Top Gun? And question number seven, in Back to the Future, what speed does the DeLorean have to go to time travel? In Back to the Future, what speed does the DeLorean have to go to time travel? I'll do that one again. In the film Back to the Future, what speed does the DeLorean have to go to time travel? Very well known 80s films. Some great films in the 80s. I had a little uh, montage of them earlier on, mm. like Die Hard and Ghostbusters and, you know, Back to the Future and whatever. Yes. Some fantastic films. Indeed. I don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all Marvel films now. And I, I think they are Marvel films, uh, they, you've watched one, you've watched them all, yeah. basically. You know, they, they're all a very similar thing. It's all special effects. All special effects. I mean, they, you know, you can see they spend a lot of money on them and whatever, but, and the effects are brilliant, but uh, even so. So, question number eight. In Minder, what was the name of Arthur Daly's drinking club? In the TV series Minder, what was the name of Arthur Daly's drinking club? And a supplementary question, if you know the name of the barman, you can stick that in the uh, comments if you want to, uh, to show us how clever you are. If you know who played, well, not who played, but what the <laughs> character was of the barman of uh, of said drinking club, um, yeah, you can stick that in the comments. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I know a few people will know this. <laughs> Margaret likes horror films. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was a horror film uh, trilogy, in, or maybe even more, in the 80s, wasn't it? So, yeah. so in uh, question number eight in the TV series Minder, what was the name of Arthur Daly's Arthur Daly's drinking club? And if you uh, if you know the name of the barman, oh, then, oh yes, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, look at that. People do. All, <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. So you're, you're going you're gonna to get the drinking club, no no doubt about this, no doubt about this. So in um, in the TV series Blackadder, which did start in the eighties, who played the uh, which actor plays the long suffering servant Baldrick? In the TV series Blackadder, who plays the long-suffering servant Baldrick? That's that one. So it's the name of the actor we require on that one. And your last question in the last round proper of the quiz. Who was the voice of the original Danger Mouse cartoon? Who was the voice of the original Danger Mouse cartoon? So there you are. That's all the questions. I'm sorry about the spelling of Tom Cruise. I don't know what happened there. I must have uh, <laughs> auto-corrected or something or done something on shoe. Slit. <laughs> Cruz. Oh, was Penelope Cruz, I think I was talking about it. It'd still be wrong, wouldn't it? No, Penelope Cruz is like that, I think. With wouldn't a Z. It? But with the, the I and the E, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not what sure. Do what do I know? What do I know? So uh, so there they all are. There's your questions. So if you um, if you grab a drink, then take your time. Yes. Have a nice time. Uh, yes, let's chill out a moment before... Uh... What was his drink? Oh, that's a good question, Dan. Yeah, what was Arthur's drink? What was it now? Does anybody was it know? Was, was it no, it, well, no. Oh. No, it was something like... It was like oh, Southern Comfort Lemonade or something, or... I'm sure it was a... I'm sure it was a spirit, Arthur Daly's drink. I'm sure people will... Uh, Margaret, Margaret! <laughs> Did you have a television in your house? <laughs> What's going on? It's the taking part that counts, we know yeah, this. Yeah, of course, yes. But you've surpassed yourself tonight, Margaret, on that round. 
Oh, let's give. I'm going to give Margaret a, a thumbs up. Oh. A thumbs up for Margaret and also a like for Margaret. Scotch uh, on the rocks. Scotch on the rocks. I wasn't said it? whiskey. Oh you right. Well, you 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 poo poo me. Oh, someone's saying vodka. Oh, gin yeah, and tonic. VAT vodka. Vodka yes. and tonic. VAT Dave. Yeah, that's what he used to say. Oh. Like, indeed, Dan, you're absolutely spot on. I remember that now. Large VAT. Vodka and tonic. I remember. I think I actually said it to a barman in our local pub and he looked at me gone out <laughs> VAT large VAT Dave <laughs> <laughs> right let me go through the answers uh, so you've had time to um, to put them in let me uh, let me go through them so um... <laughs> so question number one who shot JR uh, it was his sister-in-law actually Kristen Shepherd Kristen Shepherd she was a person who shot JR. If you just said Kristin, then um, oh, you get course. half a point. Correct. So, in the TV series, Knight Rider, with the Hoff, legend, absolutely brilliant program. Loved it. And Chips. I loved all those kind of programs. In the Knight Rider TV series, the kit uh, stands for Knight Industry 2000. K-I-T-T. -T, Knight Industry 2000. So uh, he was Michael Knight and he worked for Knight Industries. Uh, so Knight Industry 2000 is your answer. In Starsky and Hutch, the name of the super cool dude uh, who was their streetwise snitch, Huggy Bear. You remember Starsky and Hutch? You've got Starsky, Hutch and then Huggy Bear was one of the other main characters. Now, uh, the dogs in Magnum were correctly identified as Zeus and Apollo by, uh, by someone on here. I uh, scrolled off the screen now, I can't remember. And... Um, uh, they were Doberman Pinchers. Doberman Pinchers. Sue Rushton. Sue Rushton. Told us. Sue. Well done, yes. Sue. Uh, Zeus yes. and Apollo were their names, but they were they were black, beautiful looking dogs. Do Doberman Pinchers. Yes, Margaret's uh, given us the excuse yeah. here <laughs> as to why she wasn't watching TV in the eighties. Too busy out clubbing. Well, that's fair enough, Margaret. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely fair enough. So the uh, actress who played uh, Sue Ellen. Uh, Larry Hagman, who, JR, his long-suffering wife Sue Ellen, drunk and an unfit mother and all that, was Linda Gray. Linda Gray played Sue Ellen. I think she was um, she was sort of some a model, or she went for uh, Miss America or something, or or the be be beauty before. beauty pa pageant. <laughs> yes, before she became an actress, uh, I think I think that's right. Uh, anyway, Larry Hagman's wife Sue Ellen was played by Linda Gray. Is your answer to number five? Then you've got uh, Tom Cruise, sorry misspelling there, uh, his call sign was Maverick. Tom Cruise's call sign in Top Gun was Maverick. In the Back to the Future film, the DeLorean has to reach 88 miles an hour to time travel. So when he was racing around the, uh, the town square and putting that uh, electric cable across and trying to get the electricity going, he had to reach 88 miles an hour to time travel. In Minder, the name of Arthur Daly's drinking club, where Dave, the barman, was serving him a large VAT, was the Winchester. The Winchester Club is your answer to question number eight. The actor who plays uh, Baldrick is uh, Tony Robinson, and the person who does the voice for Danger Mouse, or the original cartoon voice for Danger Mouse, is, of course, David Jason. So, we now have come to the end of the quiz properly. We will go on to do the... Uh, tiebreaker um but um we got stephen doherty in pole position hadn't we i think Indeed, at round three yes. with a few people closely yes. following Indeed. and everybody else lining up behind so um so what we'll do now is if you uh if you get your answers to that we'll see if stephen has been overtaken and mm. um yeah the, or put your answers in after 40 why not let's see if, see, yes, if, let's see, let's see, see, see see if this works because we, we, we're sort of worried so if you stick stick your answer in out of 40, um, you total well done, Lynette, on last round. 9 out of 10, that's a good score. Lisa Stevens, 36 and a half. Wow. Tell you what, Lisa, you know your 80s, don't you? Got me T-shirt question. Got 36 and a half at me quiz. Wow. Andy, wow. 10 out of 10. Yes, Andy was busy watching the telly. He wasn't out clubbing like Margaret was. <laughs> Phil got 30 out of 40. Well done. Respectable score. Other Phil, Phil B, 32. Jane, Jane's been on a lot of, uh, on a lot of the quizzes. Twenty-seven and a half out of forty. I think Jane's a little bit young though, so she might not remember the eighties as well. So, um, 
Oh, Andy, Andy and Vanessa, Andy White there up in Tamworth. He got 31. Well done, And Sue, 33. Great score, Sue. Fantastic. Super Duper got eight. We don't know what your uh, cumulative is, though, but you got eight there. She's on 24 and a half. Oh, was she? Oh, Dawn and, Dawn and Tony, 31. Well done, Dawn. Sue Rushton, uh, 27 and a half. Sue, Sue got more than my little there. Uh, quiz within a quiz. <laughs> Jane's blaming Gary. Poor old Gary. He gets to blame for a lot of things in Jane's house. So, Lynette, what's uh, you and Perry normally do? Well, Lynette and Perry, incidentally, are a little team, and they normally do very well. They've won three of my quizzes. So, um, the music quizzes, that is. They're really good on music. So, uh, and Margaret's on 20. Yeah, Joe, 28 and a half. Nikki Mason, 29. Well done, Nikki. Good scoring. <laughs> hey, I like Rick Cassie. What, me? <laughs> was supposed to be... Um, who was he supposed to be? Tony Hadley. <laughs> oh, Jane, you're a similar age to me. I'm 53, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, slightly younger than me. But, yeah, you would have remembered the 80s because, uh, yeah, you, you would have been... Uh, what would you have been? You would have been 11 in 1980 and... 21 by 1990 so yeah you'd have, you would have been right right up your era that would have right up your street carl's round was tricky lynette yes you see you can't have it all your own way you can't have it all your own way right let's um carry on doing that while i i get the tiebreaker ready um and then you can have a bit of fun with the tiebreaker so um so here we are now the tiebreaker is a type it in the answers so it's a complete change to what i said earlier on it's a type it in the answers uh, type thing and we do have a bit of a laugh right. with the tiebreaker because we do get some ridiculous answers in there, I have to say. so let, let's, that, let's see if penny's see? managed to figure out right. who's won okay well <clears throat> right so um we've 32 yep out of 40 we have andy commender and phil bebbington yes with 32 and a half, we have Sue Padupa. Yeah. We, and Lynette Woods. Oh, well done, Lynette. 32 and a half. That's good scoring. Uh, right, then we've got um, 33, Jane Roger. And 33 and a half, Sue Byers and Joe the Lady, Joe Langford. Yeah. Then... Oh. I wonder if Tim was helping Joe tonight, or is he banished I'll, to the I'll, East I'll Wing? Think, well, I can't, we I don't think know. there was some comments, was there some comments earlier on. on, 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 on lost, She's I'll, forgiven him, I'll you see, and let, let him I'll come into the, the warm part of the house. Um, 35 and a half, Stephen Doty. 35 and a half, <laughs> yes. And... Oh, a change, and, a change in the lead. Oh, gosh. <laughs> in the lead, yeah. I mean, this... I mean, we do the um, the tie break for fun, don't we? Yeah, we're going to do the tie break, so we'll but, see who's um, won. But the winner, the yeah. winner, Lisa Stevens. Oh, Lisa, Lisa Steve yes, Lisa. Lisa and who? And hubby. So uh, Lisa and Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Stevens and husband. Well done, Lisa. And a half. That's Absolutely. A brilliant mark. Lisa, if you want to um, email me, um, oh, let, let me give you your prize. Hang on. Where's the. Uh, <laughs> Just a second, I, I should have got this ready, really, shouldn't I? So, here we are. Here's the uh, prize on Brucey's conveyor belt for Lisa Stevens. Let's all give Lisa some thumbs up, because she's done ever so well. She's uh, she's come up on the rails and uh, and snuck in past uh, Steve, who was leading for a couple of rounds. Uh, so, she was fantastic. Yes, Amy, you're too young. Yes, you're, you're only 30, so there's no um, there's no way that you were going to... Going to do oh. well at 80s uh, TV shows and stuff like that. So uh, there we are. And it's the taking part. But it's the taking part, fun, as we say to Margaret, it's the taking part. It's all counts. fun. Oh, so, Margaret, I think, got seven and a half out of 40. So oh, well, that's, that's pretty you know, good, Margaret. That, that, that's, uh, that, that's as normal. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, you know. You know, uh, you know we love you, really. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Margaret, got to say, nice present. Let me show the, oh, yes. the assembly. Oh, yes. So, it. yes, Penny's using your pen, your musical note pen that you it's sent lovely. us for Christmas. Thank you, Margaret, for that. So, yes, so there we are. Hearts and thumbs up for uh, for Lisa, who has done marvellously well, I have to say. 37 and a half. So, Lisa, if you want to message Vinyl Revival on our Facebook page with uh, some suggestions for rounds, then um, then we'll be happy to uh, to take your comments on board and, and do your suggestions by way of a uh, of a small prize that we can offer you. 
for uh, for doing that. So uh, so let's get the uh, tiebreaker on the go. So this is just a bit of fun, and when I give you the signal, what I will do is I will ask you to um, to type them in the comments. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to read the um, the question. Now the answer is in number of meters. Yes. So it will be a question, and the answer will be in number of meters, not centimeters or miles or anything like that. It's how many meters. Okay. So let's get the question on the go, and then I'll give you about three or four seconds to read and digest it, and then type the answers straight away in the comments, and then we'll see how much you remember of the 80s. So here it comes. So in 1988, Olympics, Olymp in the 1988 Olympics, Britain's legendary ski jumper Eddie the Eagle Edwards set a new British record. How far did he jump? So I'll go in five, four, three, two, one. Type the answers in. Type the answers in the comments. Start Type the answers in now. Get a number of meters that you think Eddie the Eagle jumped in the 1988 Olympics. See how you get on with that. And once they start drying up, um, so we've got, oh, 73, 78, 86. No one said something silly like, you know, like 500 or something, have they? <laughs> 310, woof. You don't know much about uh, Olympic ski jumping then, Stephen. I've, I've found your Achilles heel there, my friend. <laughs> 60, yes. Andy, 60 as well. 67. Yeah, yeah. 148. Gosh. Phil B, 89. They're still coming flying in. Jane, Roger, 70. Perry, 78. He wasn't carrying one of your helium balloons, Perry. <laughs> Louise Rowley, 65. Hmm. 85 metres. Lisa. <laughs> oh, oh, I can scroll this down. Oh, that's good. Right, okay. I'm going to reveal the answer. I think they're sort of... Uh, oh, they're still coming in. A few coming in. I'll give you another couple of seconds. <laughs> a couple of seconds. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, right, I'll give <laughs> People have got things to do, Pen. <laughs> There's drinking to be done. Not by me. No, I no you're on dry oh, January. Dry January. And in fact, I've been out for a jog tonight. Yes. So um, very yeah. well. There we go. Right, let's get the answer on the go. Here we are. So the actual answer was a number of meters that legend look at look at the photo of him there actually. That is absolutely class, that is. It was a plasterer by trade. Fantastic. Caught the imagination. So, okay, right. No more answers then. Let's go on to... He jumped 71 metres and established a British record that um, that had stood since 1928, apparently. Right. Let's have a look who got the it was, uh, it was... Someone said 70. Uh, Somebody... J Jane... Someone, Jane Roger. Jane Roger said 70. Oh. I think you were the closest. I don't know if anyone got it exactly right. 71. So we have a supplementary. You scroll up, uh, oh, no. Jane Roger. Go go up past um, past Perry, past Louise Rowley, and you, you'll see Jane Roger about three above. So Jane, you have won the supplementary prize, which is the secondary uh, solid gold trophy, mm -hmm. and uh, and well done to you. So let's give let's give Jane some uh, some love and some hearts and likes and thumbs up and things, for uh, for doing spectacularly well and getting to within one meter of Eddie the Eagle's legendary uh, jump there for uh, representing Great Britain. So um, there we are. Well done, Jane. Uh, you, you've uh, you've got the closest there, so you win the uh, the tiebreaker. So all that is left to do is, um, before we finish, is me to give a quick advert. So if I do this, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, if you want to like our page, that's what the page looks like. It's got the gold, um, the purple glitter ball. So if you wear that uh, arrows are pointing, if you click like, then you'll get notifications of all of our events as they come up. And, uh, and that'd be very nice. And then this is the reviews page. And if you want to give us a review and tell us what you think, um, all the better. If you want to send us a message, uh, giving us suggestions for quiz rounds, then you know we're happy to receive those as well. So, uh, so that's what that is. 
let's just uh, go on to this one here, which is uh, the next few quizzes. So next Friday is Penny's 70s quiz. Then you've got um, my Birmingham quiz in two weeks' time. And then on the 19th of Feb, you've got DJ Ozzy's rock music quiz. There will be something on the 12th. Yeah. I'll be doing one on the 12th, yet to be decided. Yep. Yeah. So here's, here's Penny. She does exist. There she is. Hello. My wonderful <laughs> wife and able assistant. So... Thank you very, very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you to the newcomers. Hope to see yes. you again. Thanks, as always, to our regulars. We love having you on here. We love your comments, and we love all the messages that you send us. Um, stay safe, everyone. Hopefully, yes. lockdown will finish soon. Um, if you're in our area, which is Birmingham, Solly Hall, West Midlands area, um, please come and see us uh, when we're back at the pubs and clubs DJing. We'd love to see meet you in person. Um, otherwise, have the rest of a great Friday. Have a great weekend, and see you next Friday. Thank you. Bye, Bye -bye. everyone. Take care.